All right, time to do a little overhaul. The trucks are beat up and everything's loose and flopping around. So we're gonna tighten everything up, replace a bunch of stuff, take the motors apart, and uh, try to get them feeling a little nicer. So we got Cozy Tofu and Silver Sable, Super Sable. They're both the same platform, HSPs. This is one of the big problems with these. There's a lot of slop. You can see the steering linkage too, there's just lots of slop. And then on the rear as well, some of these bearings are in bad shape too. I'm gonna replace a bunch of stuff there, refill the shocks, and tighten up a bunch of other stuff along the way. And then on Cozy Tofu, basically same kind of thing, overhaul, except we also gotta swap the chassis over. And I'll talk about some of the little changes and things that I do along the way to make them in theory, work better. So we'll start with the sable. All right, so got it mostly apart. And this is a red cat larger battery tray lets you fit a 3s battery on there doing fine don't need to do anything there motor's feeling a little rough and there's quite a bit of play in that shaft i'm gonna take that apart and clean that up all of the steering on this is totally blown out and worn out i gotta take these shocks off well that one's got some damping Oh yeah, that one's still good. Nice oil here, fairly heavy. 70, 900, Traxxas is what they had at Island Toys, so give this a try. seem to be even be leaking much. These shocks are pretty bad and the little bladders don't seal very well at the top. They don't fit very well. Little discs inside don't seal very well. But depending on which ones you get, some randomly fit better than others. So if you go through a bunch, you can eventually harvest out some pistons and things that work decently. This oil is nice and thick, should make things a lot nicer. All right, so shocks are all done. Now I'm gonna take this motor apart. So this is the Hobby Wing Easy Run 3660 Max 10 SCT kit. It's a pretty good motor, but it's got some play. There's a little motor mount. And this, a bearing sits in here. Sometimes that can get worn out, but it's still snug, so. This is kind of interesting. So these end bolts are metric 1.5 but these ones on this side are 1.3 or at least on the motor I got if you're having trouble with that that's what you need 1.3 mil Just pull it out it's held in by magnets that bearing on the front definitely doesn't seem like it's in good shape and there's our rear bearing actually it doesn't seem too bad a little bit of this. This is just bike lube that's meant to not collect dust. There we go. And yeah, that's not going to be easy to get out either, I don't think. That's a pain in the ass. No way to push it through. No way to get under it. That's pretty stupid. It still spins okay, but it's totally worn out. Maybe heat it up. That might do it. Bad front bearing. Just go go ahead and get a new motor. And that will be that. I'm just gonna put it back together and use it as it is until some bearings or a motor arrive. Don't wanna cross thread these. Turn them slowly in backwards first until it pops in. And then you know it's in the threads. Listen for the little pop. That, now it's in the thread for sure. We can smoothly go in. First, we want our little doodads on here. Oh, 
that's as good as that's going to get. Right, the motor is done. I'm not going to take the diffs apart because they're working and I don't want to break what's not broke or not fix. I don't want to fix what's not broken. For the rear, put on new, new ones here. Little set screws on the bottom keep this from wiggling around. This set of axles was really good. They're, well, we'll see how they last for durability, but they're super snug. So these, there should be a very little play. So what I do on the back here, so I can move back and forth a little bit. So I put a little washer in between. Just have to make sure it's a thin enough washer that it doesn't bind up. The black ones that come with the Techno seem to be a good size. Now we got a shim in there. Now it can't move at all. It's about as free of play as anything gets on here. I want these to stay tight. First I clean them with ISO, isopropyl alcohol. That degreases them. First time it's all dirty, second time it's all clean. And just a little dab of that. that in there. Snug it up nice. Much much better than this. The other thing I want to do, I'm gonna put two, two of these on here to make the back end a little more stable. See how that works. That's my idea. Double, double swing arm. Instead of one flopping around, now there's two not flopping around. I like that. Definitely feels like it's a lot more stable on this side than on this side. We'll see how it goes, but so far I think that is the way to go. I'm gonna set up the other side the same way and we'll move on to the next thing. Well, we have this all apart. I'm gonna check these bearings on the outside so we can get at those without taking the diff apart. A Little bit of play, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to leave it and the way I keep this thing. On this side I have a shim, then the pin, then the gear, then another shim, and another shim, then the C-clip, then another shim, then the bearing. And that prevents anything from moving at all in there. This in here. First the motor mount and then the diff. Another thing I did here is I used larger screws. These are just coarse thread. Keeps this back end a lot more solid. You have to either drill out or tap the holes a little bit, of course. It's been working really well. There we go. And the next thing, we'll reinstall the steering equipment. Steering on these things is stupid. Anyways, the way I did this, I have one of these little sleeve pieces, and these are really useful for these trucks. There's a bunch of places you can use them. In order to get this to work with these sleeves, this metal piece, you have to shave down a tiny little bit. So on this side, it's, even though this, so this, the bolt is tight, this can still rotate. On this side, I haven't shaved it down quite enough. When it's tight, it doesn't want to move. So I need to sh shave down a little bit more off that side. The alternative, you can also, instead of using this metal piece or the plastic piece that comes with it, you can use one of the little linkages and two small ends. Over time, this wears a lot less than the aluminum an old one here and you can see when this is in there it has a lot of play and that's because that's had some wear the brand new one of course doesn't move at all but this fairly cheap aluminum wears out faster than the plastic this may be a better option anyways so let's shave off a little more of this you need to take just enough off to be able to tighten down the bolt without 
it's squishing it. If you take too much off, then it can flop up and down, and that's no good. Putting this together, you want the sleeve to go in with the flange on the top. The bolt tightens down against the sleeve, and you can get that tight without squishing the linkage. So now they're both tight, but it still moves. Not too much play. Get our little brass bushings in there. Those on either side. And then this guy with the... It's easier if you put this post on first. Tiny little thing at the bottom you can get. One of these little guys. Yep, five and a half. You can snug that up. Now we're going to redo the front end and then we'll start putting things back together. Main thing on the front that I'm going to do is get rid of some of the slop. When you use a metal piece in here, which I recommend using at least this piece, these screws will strip out the plastic one on the top and bottom and then this will constantly fall off and it uh, doesn't happen with the metal one. But as you can see, it gives it there's a lot of movement, which is no good. And then that also allows it to move side to side a little bit. And then combine that with the other, all the other slop, and you end up with a bunch of slop. What I'm going to do here is I've got a bunch of these little tiny diff shims, and that allows it to turn freely still with the nut tight, but it doesn't move nearly as much. The last set of axles that I got, they're really snug and fit into the bearings really, really well. So there's no movement in there, which is really nice. These are Hobby Park brand parts, which are quite a bit nicer than the other ones. So this is just some no-name stuff. You can see this end is flat, whereas on this one it's got a radius. There's a couple other differences too. The Hobby Park ones actually seem like they're better quality. It's worth maybe paying a little bit more for those parts uh, because this cheap aluminum wears out really fast. We're gonna replace all of this, all the pins and the arms because these arms are also worn out and they're slopping around quite a bit. You gotta make sure you don't use too long of screws for this either or else they'll hit the axle in the middle there. That is good and tight. No play. Very good. So the way we set this up, and so I got four shims sit on top of the little sleeve, and then that goes in there. So we've got shims and sleeve, and then another sleeve on the bottom goes with the flange on the top there. And then this piece comes in here. Take our little Loctite screw. The screw is long enough, but it's not too long, so it's not sticking out. It's a lot easier to take out those bearings if you have to without taking all the screws out. All right, there we go. Nice and smooth, no play, no resistance. So another thing, the way I have these set up, the cutout in the front and the thing so that it's high. So there's a little bit of play in there. I'm gonna get a little skinny washer. Perfect, so it still moves easily, but way less play. So that's great. Gotta love Eclipse. There's the old non-shimmed setup, very worn out too. And then there's the new shim setup, doesn't move at all. Very nice, very pleased. We'll see how it holds up in the long run, but also might replace these. These have quite a bit of play in them. Probably go back to plastic up here because the metal just seems to add weight and wears out faster. Not a lot of things need to be replaced with metal in here. With this 
the suspension setup, this seems to be a really good place. This is on the top outside on the top outside here and the middle over here. And as you can see, that makes it pretty much parallel to the swing arm, which is what you want, parallel to the dog bone. And then if we set up the steering like this, so see this little post here, there's another post under there. I have a little rubber grommet that's cut in half. Half of it's on the bottom and half of it's on the top and then a little plastic thing and then a um, like countersunk style screw. And what that does is that allows you to have, see how this control arm is at the same angle as everything else. And what that means is when you go through the suspension travel, the wheel doesn't change at all. You don't get any bump steer. And that's really nice. So mounted like this on the inboard side and then on the outboard side, just using one of the little ball ends um, on the bottom side of this. That's what you want to do, I think, with the steering. That allows it to keep its proper orientation through the whole travel and doesn't change. And then on the rear, I have it set up on the bottom outside and the bottom inside over here. And it doesn't matter as much because you don't have that control arm, but obviously if you set this up wrong, then you're, you know, some people, depending on what you want, you actually may want that well, where it will change its camber a little bit as it goes through the travel. But I don't want that. And this you can see as the wheel goes up, it doesn't turn at all. No bump steer. And that's because of this steering link setup. Things that we fixed after the test. Because the dog bone kept popping out, figured out that it's because the steering is able to move over too far. What would happen is when this got pushed over by, not by the servo necessarily, because that's limited, but by when it hits the ground or something bashes it over, when that got pushed over too far, then it would allow this dog bone to pop out. See how close that is to the edge? If this continues to turn, then the pin on the dog bone pops out and then the dog bone falls out. And that was happening all the time. So, added those little steering stopper blocks on both cars. Right there and right there. Just little pieces of plastic that I used the hole um, that's threaded in there. You can kind of see in the back. It works really well. So, that's great. The dog bones, if your dog bones are too long, you'll hit, the dog bones will bind up before it hits the ground, which makes them bend. So you want to sort of even it all so it, as the chassis slaps the ground, that's kind of where everything stops. Maybe you just pass that. And that way it spreads the force everywhere instead of having it on one specific piece. Got these spacers in both of them, and that helps get a little bit wider thing. Here's the thing with these, you can see how that moves. If you get the right size of shim, you can put the shims in between. You take this out, put the shims on there, put it back in, and it pulls this whole thing back a little bit. I'm out of shim, so I wasn't able to get this quite perfect, but you can use that to eliminate that bit of back and forth. And this can sometimes loosen off over time too, so. I'll check that every so often. These were the pins, the front pins. And I actually have this set up a little differently again from how it's supposed to be. Got the diff and then the diff mount hinge hinges. And then so I actually use the rear bumper on the front as well because you can capture it from both both ends. If you get the rear pins and the rear bumper, put those on the front. It captures it on both ends, whereas the stock ones only have a C-clip on one end, so they can slide out and it's kind of a pain in the ass. You have to modify this rear piece a little bit, cut out, and I actually have to cut out a little bit more here to fit. It goes in there like that, and then you can screw this in, just like the rear bumper, but on the front, and it's a lot more solid. And see there's a bit of a space there. This can move in and out. 
So I'm gonna put some shims in between there to keep that from moving. Put my fresh one on here. And this bearing is all fucked, so I'm gonna replace that bearing. All right, much more solid. So now it can't move around. It's getting pretty worn out. I keep pack these with marine grease. Find that keeps, collects all the grit and crap and keeps things cool. Seems to work. So that's what I do. Make sure you put this in the right way because if you don't, the wheels will go in the wrong direction. And I have done that before, of course. So I'm just gonna run these up along here. A little bit of rubber in there. A bit nice and cushy. All right, finished it all up. Camera died a few times. This shock oil made a huge difference. It is way heavier. And these shocks are actually performing like real shocks now, which is amazing. The fact that they hold oil at all is pretty amazing to me. These things are not built well. Those shocks are so stiff. Just, they barely even compress. I got it, like I said, I got it for the Techno, which is a lot heavier, much stronger spring. The front end still got a little bit of play to it. Here's a comparison for the amount of slop and play that is missing. This is basically the same setup that was in here. Here's what it looks like. So, just a floppy mess. And then on the rear. Now this one with brand new bearings, brand new housings and everything. You know, way less movement in the front. Also replaced a bunch of the hardware. So I've got these cap head, which are a little bigger. They're 2.5 mil instead of two mil because these are coming on and off all the time whenever you break a dog bone they're just so much nicer than phillips and these things come with all phillips heads so one little thing with the body these drift bodies don't really fit monster trucks like this they're not really designed for them but you can make it work with some extra cutting and then if you add a strip of tape or in this case i use this little thin flexible plastic um, you can make sort of skirts that extend the bottom piece and this body has been holding up really well this is a plastic cutting board that i cut out into little sections and then shoe uh, e600 e6000 uh, adhesive use that to attach them in sort of around the mounting holes and it's been holding up really well got the double arm set up on the back here so i might end up start doing that on the front too but there's not quite enough room the way that everything lines up. The only problem with this one now is this motor is done, but it still kind of works. And I got a new motor on the way because I don't want to deal with getting that bearing out. But anyways, let's see how this all works now that it's all finished up. All right. Bad shape. Drive train's pretty smooth though. It's about a six pound with the battery in there. Alright. Little baby battery. And so that one weighs five pounds, so so it's it's only a pound of difference, but it's pretty significant when the whole thing only weighs five pounds or six pounds. Most of the weight difference on the other one comes from the heavier ESC and motor. So that's the only real, and then of course the battery. Anyways, so here's what we're gonna do with Cozy. Cozy has a broken chassis. So we got a chassis here, got a bunch of new new bearings, everything. Got some new ones on the rear. I'm trying plastic on the rear of this one because it's got a little less power and everything. And the plastic pieces are much snugger fitting with the bearings and with everything so a little more stable basically do the same thing redo the shocks try to get rid of some of this get that one done see how it turns out All done. Made a few little changes and updates. 
Did the same thing on the rear with the double links. Left the diffs pretty much alone because they're working and they're eventually gonna break and I'll replace them then. Tightened up the front as much as I could, but not as snug as the other one because these sets of steering links are a little lower quality and the holes are bigger. So even with the vertical play dealt with with some shims under here, they still have side to side play. I use the same bumper setup as the rear because it allows the pins to thread through it. It's a lot stronger, keeps the front end a lot more rigid. Uh, I drilled a couple of little holes and countersunk them just like on the back. So this tiny little screws screw into this plastic piece here and tie that together. So now that that front end is the same as the rear end and it's a lot more sturdy. Filled up these shocks with sort of a mix of lightweight shock oil and gear oil uh, because I didn't have quite enough lightweight oil and the 900 is too heavy for these trucks. It's uh, a tiny bit dampened, but it'll still have that really bouncy sort of feel that I like on this. We got a new brace because this is just done. Replaced the hinge blocks with aluminum ones because these are all worn out. Diff housings was slightly broken, so replace that. Just went through and found the hinges that had the tightest hinge holes still. Had to replace a bunch of the pins. They were all totally bent. Pretty decent little overhaul, and it's feeling ready to go. Pretty stoked. So, anyways, that's where we're at with those. Gonna have a sweet test soon.